Say you've come across a good company and you want to do a bit more research into it. There are a number of different platforms out there such as QuickFS, Ticker.com, even within your brokerage portfolio you may have access to some different screeners and even research tools. But today we're going to be focusing on a company called Simply Wall Street. This is your first time here guys. My name's Neil and I'm going to be walking you through Simply Wall Street today. Um, just a real basic overview of how to use the platform. Now I believe Simply Wall Street is great for beginners, especially if you're just starting to dip your toe into the market and you're wanting to get a bit more insight into the companies that you're investing in or looking at investing in. Simply Wall Street is a great place to start as it's pulled a lot of the information from these financial statements and put them into easy to understand graphs so you can just see at a quick glance what revenue has been doing, what the balance sheet is like, what management are doing, are they buying stocks, what is the breakdown of the ownership of the company, very good highlight reel. You can spend about five minutes on a company and you have a lot more insight than what you would maybe if you're scrolling through the 10K or something similar to that. And then from there, if you're happy and you like what you see there, then you can go on and look at the company's website itself. But I think it's a great place to start. Simply Wall Street covers over 100,000 stocks across 95 countries. They currently have around 4 million users on their website and they've been founded since 2014 by an Australian guy called Al Bentley. Um, they have a great story. I personally use them. Now, I do have an affiliate agreement with Simply Wall Street. I'll leave a link in the description below, but I'll touch on that a bit later on into the video as well. With that said, let's jump on over to the laptop and check out Simply Wall Street. So we're over on the Simply Wall Street main homepage here. Now this just gives you a quick snapshot of your portfolio, different markets that you may be tracking on the left here, and also the latest updates from any companies that you have in your portfolio, and I think even on your watch list as well. And then over on the right here, top gainers and top losers over the last, you can pick the date range by the last seven days, one month, three months, one year, three years, and up to even five years. Just if you're looking for other ideas and things you may want to, companies you may want to look into. Next tab we have here is markets. So they've got a number of different markets. Like I said earlier, they've got over 100,000 stocks on Simply Wall Street. Um, there's only been once or twice, I think, that I've actually searched for a company and it wasn't on there. I think there was some very small um, a liquid company. I can't remember offhand what exactly that company was, to be honest. Um, but you can scroll down to the list here. It gives you access to all these different uh, markets across the world and then any other little um, market valuation and performance, different things we can look at here. Latest news, some of the companies here on the Australian market, FMG at the top, also CBA, ANZ. Now if we move across here to the Discover tab, this is also a good um, investing idea if in case you're wanting to look at a different sector um, or dividend stocks or whatever it may be. This is a bit of a screening tool, which is actually quite a good screening tool to be honest. Um, also sample portfolios there as well. Let's say you go down to potential opportunities here. So we can open this tab up. Now this is looking at Australian potential opportunities. Um, and they've got 174 companies here. And you can just scroll down the list here. Got the, the last price, seven day return, one year return, the current market tap, uh, market cap, sorry, and the list target, valuation, price to earnings um, ratio, the growth, and also the dividend yield, and then also the industry and the sector that they're in. And you can change this to whatever country maybe you're looking at in the United Kingdom or US or wherever it may be, other potential opportunities and things that you may want to look at. This here, is this little blob that we see, this is their snowflake analysis. We'll have a look at that in a second, but that's just um, one something that's quite unique to Simply Wall Street. Here we have your watch list, so you can create a watch list of companies that you may be looking at um, through here. So here we can have a watch list. Here's a couple of companies I have on my watch list. Um, and you go through, get some latest results and things from those companies that are on your watch list. Add stocks, it's all fairly straightforward. Just add the stock, type in the ticket code. Let's say you wanted to put Apple on there. You can type Apple in and it'll come up, boom. And you can add that to your watch list. And then we have the portfolios tab. Now there is a email alert that you can set up within this portfolio tab, which is fantastic. Um, if you want to get the latest results, latest earnings results from that particular company or even the dividend that may be coming out or something else that may have happened within the maybe merger or an acquisition that the company is making, um, which is good. I get an email nearly every day, I think, with one of the positions within my portfolio on here. And then lastly, the screener. Now this is something I don't use personally too much, um, but you can go through here look at different companies, put in whatever parameters you want to filter by market, filter by industry, advanced industry, advanced filters, and also this is the snowflake, so you can sort of crank this up, you want something that's maybe high in value with good potential future growth, good past, balance sheet's looking good, and they also pay a dividend, and then you can hit that, boom, and away you go searching 
anything that comes up. So they've got 34 companies here. Um, coming down, you can just scroll through some of these. Now within the free version, you only get um, access to the top four. But if you go into the one of the premium um, plans here, you get access to a lot more within that search that's come up. You get access to the 34 companies. So the last thing we're quickly going to cover today, and that is the search bar here on the far right. Um, if you know the company's name or the ticker, you can put this into the search bar here uh, and then go from there. Like I said, they have over 150,000 stocks on their website. And this, I've only ever, I think, once come across a company I was looking at that wasn't on their website, and that was some weird, obscure company. Um, very small market cap it was. Anyway, with that said, today we're going to be looking at Tassel Group. Just as an example, this is not a buy recommendation. Tassel Group is an ASX-listed salmon farming company here in Australia. I'm just going to be using this as an example today, just to run you guys through quickly some of the key things to look at when you're looking at analyzing companies through Simply Wall Street, if this is your first time using the platform. So at the top of the page here, you have the last price, the market cap, what it's been doing the last seven days. Over the last year, you can see it's only returned 2.8%, so very little return uh, for shareholders over the last year. You can add it to your watch list, add it to your portfolio here, just with these two tabs, and it's covered by four analysts. A little overview of Tassel. Um, now you've got the positive points here, trading at 69.6% below its estimate of its fair value. Now take this with a grain of salt. You can use this as a gauge rather than gospel. Okay, we'll go over this in a bit more in detail later on when we get down to the fair value assessment of Tassel. Um, earnings are forecast to grow at 23.5% per year. Now this is based off those four analysts, and I think they take a group average of those four analysts. A couple of things here noteworthy of. Um, unstable dividend track record, large one-off items impacting financial results and profit margins are decreasing. Hopefully they will come up a bit over the next few years as the prawn farming comes on more online. Now over on the right here we have the snowflake analysis. This is just a very brief snapshot. They have a few parameters, six parameters within each of these sections um, that they've you know, gauged as something that you want to keep tabs on. So valuation, that's to say it's coming in pretty good for valuation, five of the six uh, big check marks there. Future growth, three out of three. Past, all X's there. But like I said, you want to do your own research. This is more just of a gauge. And may it be a place that you want to do some more research if you are looking at investing in the company. The health of the company, this is obviously how much cash the company has or how much, what the balance sheet is, what sort of liabilities do they have. Um, and also if the company pays a dividend, this is where you have information on the dividend. So just a quick, obviously the more green in this section, the better off you are. Um, but as you can see, Tassel's not too bad there. Anyway, let's keep moving. I'm going to be skimming through it pretty quick today, guys. If there's anything that you're a bit unsure of, definitely drop that in the comments below, and I'll do a follow-up video just on that one particular section. If it was a bit sh quick, highlight here on the competitors, price history, and the performance. You can scroll through the different tabs here over one month up to the max. So I've gone out to the max here, back to 2004 when they were listed at around 70 cents, and as today they're trading around $3.60. So you can say it's been relatively flat over the last sort of seven or so years here. Um, let's keep moving forward with it. Now they have the recent news and updates here. Quite often Simply Wall Street will actually write an article in here. Definitely worth a read. Um, a lot of the latest announcements that have been made from the company here. Um, first half 2020 earnings, 2022 earnings have just been released here on Feb 17th. Um, so you just get a quick snapshot of their latest earnings there as well, which is great if you just wanted to keep up with the company as well. Shareholder returns about the company, a little bit more information about the company, who the CEO is, when it was founded, and also the website. So now if you've done your initial screen, you're happy to keep researching a bit more, I definitely recommend going over to the website of whatever company you're looking at, look at their investor relations, start looking over previous year reports, uh, financial reports, and their sustainability reports, especially for Tassel, copped a fair bit of um, negative news over the years um, with regards to their sustainability and the negative effects that salmon farming has uh, here in Tasmania. Quick snapshot over their revenue and their earnings, uh, current PE ratio and their current price to sales ratio. Bit more detail on the earnings revenue and their margins. Good gross margins coming in at 46%. Net profit margin, I'd like to see a bit higher than that. Um, it has actually been decreasing, but hopefully that comes back up um, now that the prawn farming is definitely online. Goes into a bit more detail around the dividends here. Definitely if you're looking at you know, companies that pay dividends, you want to see how much they're currently paying out um, of those earnings to the shareholders um, in the terms of the dividend. And at the moment, it's 73% of those earnings um, is paid out as, as a dividend, and that's currently around 3.9% current dividend yield. 
And it actually goes ex divi on March 14th. So if you're a shareholder before March 14th, you'll be eligible for that next dividend. So just a quick snapshot of the dividends there. Valuation, this is what I mentioned earlier. Now this is the fair value. They're saying it. Fair value of Tassel Group would be around that $11.87, about right, sort of good mid-range there. And currently it's trading around $3.61, so they're saying from there, um, I think they're running some sort of a discounted cash flow here, it's 69.6% undervalued, so you could say a good margin of safety there. Now like I said earlier, use this as more of a gauge rather than just gospel, you don't want to just go off what they say is fair value. Um, I've seen some of these that may be a bit out of whack from time to time, but definitely um, a good place to start if you're looking at running some different sort of valuation method um, for the company that you're looking at. So they've given it two green ticks there, as you can see. As you're going through, if you see the green ticks, obviously that's a good sign. And then it says a bit more detail about, so TGR is trading below its fair value by more than 20%. Boom, gets the green tick. A Little bit on the PE ratio here, and that compares it to the market. So compared to the market, TGR or Tassel Group is good value based on its P ratio, 17.8 compared to the Australian market, which is 18.4. And now this is the Australian market as a whole, and Tassel is currently trading below that with regards to earnings. Price to earnings growth ratio there. Price to book, currently trading below price to book, which is good to see if you're looking at investing. Now future growth, now like I said earlier, this is going off four analysts that are watching Tassel at the moment. Um, they're collectively saying that forecast annual growth, annual earnings growth of 23.4% over the next one to three years. Earnings and revenue growth forecasts here over the next couple of years. But like I said earlier, real quick snapshot there. You can scroll through and if you wanted to look at the actual numbers, you can go at the top there in black. It gives you a bit more detail on the actual revenue and earnings forecasts moving out. You can look at the free cash flow. Free cash flow has actually dropped off these last couple of years. They've been piling a lot of the money back into developing the prawn farming side of the business in Queensland. Analyst future growth forecast there, quick touch on that, obviously a few more green ticks. Now these areas of, um, just because it comes up with red X's doesn't mean to say it's a no-go, just definitely look at that and then if you want to do a bit more research on that, that's when you'd go across to the company's website itself and dig a little bit deeper there if this is an area of concern. So it just gives you something to mental check, okay cool, revenue versus market, TGR's revenue, 0.5% per year is forecast to grow slower than the Australian market at 5.5% per year. So definitely something to um, pay attention to there. Um, and then to see how much it missed out on those um, from getting that green tick as well. Future return on equity. Our return on equity has been 9.5% over the last three years with industry standard has been 8.1. So I'll let you be the judge of that. Past performance, so they haven't done on any of their checkpoints for past performance. They're not getting any green ticks here. Negative earnings growth over the past year, making it difficult to compare to the food average. Difficult to compare to the food industry average. But then you've got to say, okay, look at maybe why why there's earnings. <clears throat> So now we've come up with past performance. Now this would be an area you'd want to do some more research in if you're looking at investing into Tassel. Obviously it's not getting any green marks here. It's all red X's, so that's be an area you want to look in a bit further. Earnings and revenue history here. Another quick graph. This is what's been happening over the last uh, five or so years. As we can see, that net profit margins are decreasing. So that is an area of concern there and something you'd want to keep tabs on. And they'll mention that here. TGR's current net profit margins 6.1% are lower than last year at 9.7, so automatically that's something is a bit of a reminder there. Past earnings growth analysis, return on equity, return on assets, and return on capital employed. Financial health. Now, how we get a quick shot snapshot of the balance sheet. Tassel has a good balance sheet. We can see here both short-term and long-term assets are well covered. Um, their liabilities, so the assets are well covering their both short and long term liabilities there, which is good to see. So two green check marks there. Debt to equity analysis. Quick more touch on the balance sheet there. Dividend 3.88% currently. Um, the upcoming dividend, like I mentioned earlier, is coming in at March 14th where they will go X dividend. Especially I know a lot of Australian investors like to look at these dividend paying companies. Um, and it's good to see how much they're paying out of those earnings. So here we have current payout to shareholders is 73%. 
um, with its reasonable payout ratio 73%. TGR dividend payments are covered by earnings, which is great. You never want to see them above 100%, ideally well below. Future payout to shareholders is 55%, so good to see that this is dropping back. TGR's dividends in three years are forecast to be covered by earnings by 55.1%, so that's leaving roughly around 40, 40, 40 to 45% left in retained earnings, which they can either deploy back into the business to grow the business further, or even maybe look at paying off debt, or paying off another special dividend, or increasing the dividend. So there's a number of different things that they could do with these earnings that are retained. Slowly build up some more cash to maybe look at making another acquisition. There's a number of different things that they can do. Management, a quick touch on management here. Mark Ryan, the current CEO, has been at the helm for just over 18 years. This is his compensation. Um, quick touch on the leadership team here and their ownership within the company as well, which is also areas you want to look at. Ideally, you want companies that are founder run um, and they have a good state within the business because the CEO's interests are well aligned with the shareholder. So that's ideally what we'd be looking for. As it stands currently, Mark Ryan, the CEO, only has a 0.11% ownership within the business. So not a huge amount of skin in the game. I'd like to see more, to be honest. Um, the board members, average tenures at 3.3 years for average board members. Um, and for the leadership team, you're looking at eight years, which is pretty good. So then you get a couple of green ticks there. Insider trading volume, this is an area you want to pay attention to. Uh, insiders are the board or the directors, maybe buying off shares or selling shares. Um, for whatever reason, we never know, but it's also a good area to know if they are buying, maybe it's an indication that the share price is currently trading at a good price. So that's something to be mindful of. Um, and if we look here at recent insider transactions, hasn't been anything super recent, but as of 15th of November, John Watson, who I believe is on the board, um, he bought 20,000 shares at a price of around $3.30, $3.29 there. And we can see all throughout November there, there were other um, insider transactions all around that sort of 3.30 to uh, 3.45 and then Vanguard was obviously buying a large position as well. So we can scroll down there. Quick overview of the ownership breakdown. Dilution of shares, they haven't been issuing any more shares which is good to see, not meaningful, diluted in the past year. And then the top 25 shareholders own 47.53% of the company. So you can get a quick look who are the top 25 shareholders here. As you can see, a lot of funds invested, Vanguard Group, UBS, um, Commonwealth Superannuation, a number of different sort of investment funds, BlackRock, and then it slowly dwindles off. Quick little um, company information there to wrap it off, and also the website at the bottom there, shares outstanding and the current market cap. So there we have it guys, just a quick highlight reel looking over Tassel. If there's anything there you've been unsure of, definitely drop it in the comments below. So that's just a high level look over Simply Wall Street today guys. I'll leave a link in the description below to uh, Simply Wall Street. Now I do have an affiliate agreement with Simply Wall Street, so if you were to go on to one of the pay plans, I would receive a small commission for that. But there's no pressure whatsoever, they do have a great free platform as well, which just gives you a good, um, gives you the basics on there as well and lets you look at five companies every month. So definitely if you just wanted to look at a couple of companies, maybe the free option is enough for you. And if you wanted to move on to one of the premium versions, by all means you can go through there. Um, like I said, there's no pressure at all whatsoever to sign up or anything. Definitely I thought you guys might get some value from this platform, especially if you're just starting out. Like I said, it's great for beginners. Um, anyway, with that said, that's going to wrap us up for today's video. If you, like I said, any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Till next time, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.